I've not had a reason to talk about it on this channel yet, but I really love motorcycles. I'd been interested in them for years, and then a couple summers ago, I finally got licensed and saved up enough money to buy my own. It's just a little Honda Rebel 250, not exactly a hog, but it still represents a landmark achievement to me. I love the wind and the grit and the euphoric feeling of riding it. I've got a busy brain, and motorcycling is just so mentally and physically involved that it's one of the few things that can really put all of my other thoughts to rest. This project is one I've been thinking about for a while. I wear dresses all summer long. I live in a humid Midwestern climate, and when it gets all muggy and gross outside, I just don't want to wear pants or sleeves or even waistbands. And that is the number one excuse that stops me from taking the bike out during those hot summer months. So the goal of this project was to design a jumpsuit specifically around motorcycling in the summer heat. Safety isn't really the goal because I don't intend to wear it on the interstate or in any unreasonable situation, but as I normally wear jeans and a tank top when I'm buzzing around town or riding out on country roads, I want this jumpsuit to cover roughly the same amount of skin. So for the design, I want to use a high jewel neckline to minimize wind resistance in any flapping, which is both annoying and very hard on the fabric. Also, bringing the straps closer to my neck will help prevent them from slipping off my shoulders if I'm hunched over. I'm also going to make the straps slightly wider than your typical quarter inch spaghetti strap because it will be under a lot more stress and I want it to be strong. It must have pockets, obviously, and I'm going to use a flowing wide leg pants pattern. I'm also adding two small pleats to the front of each pant leg which will hopefully provide some ease as the pants are primarily designed to be worn sitting. For the fabric, I'm going to use a linen blend, something that will still be light and breathable, but slightly more substantial than the rayon or polyester you typically see jumpsuits made out of. The only element of decoration I'm adding are lots and lots of scallops at the neckline, at the waist, and at the hems of the pants, just for fun. For the pattern, I'm starting with the bodice I used for the checked jumper last year. Not that the designs have much in common, but the bodice has only one horizontal dart, which will make the front scallop smoother, and it has a straight bottom edge, which will also help with the scallops. I have to change the neckline quite a bit, and trace in the scallops, marking and adjusting them with gaps for the seam allowances and darts, so that they will finish as a smooth, unbroken line. For the pant legs, I had to make less adjustments. I added some length, then used scallops twice as large. For the pockets, I sketched out the design on the front pant leg, then traced it with a wheel onto fresh paper. For the bodice, I don't want to add the thickness of a lining, so I'm marking in a couple of inches from the neckline and making a facing piece. Then I can start cutting everything out. I'm going to trace the scallops and darts out with a soluble marker, because I didn't add seam allowance to that part of the pattern. Also, cutting out the facing is no problem if you don't mind cutting through your pattern. To put the jumpsuit together, I need to start with the darts. There are two in the front bodice, two in the back, and two in the back pant legs. It is highly recommended that you iron between every seam you stitch, but I won't show it every time. Also not shown any surging of the edges, but trust me, it's there. Then I can line up the bodice back pieces to the front and sew the side seams. I've got to do this first so I can stitch the scallops across smoothly.
Then I can line up the right side of the bodice with a straight strip of facing and pin it together. I found it helpful to base the facing to the bodice first and then go around a second time for the scallops. Then I needed to trim and clip across all of the scallops. I turned, then ironed the scallops flat, and the bottom edge is finished. Now for the top, I stitched together the side seams of the facing pieces, then pinned the facing across the top of the bodice. I stitched these scallops just like I did with the others. then clipped and turned them as well. I ironed them flat once I'd finished. I'm going to take a few minutes to go back and sew the straps, which I'm making a half of an inch wide instead of a quarter. I just stitch them, turn, and press. Time to get back to the pants. I started by pinning in the pocket linings, then stitching them down. I turned the linings to the inside, then lined up the pocket backs. Pinned and stitched them down, and the pockets are ready for the rest of the pants to be assembled. I lined up the pant leg fronts to backs, then sewed the inner leg seams and the outer leg seams. Now would be a good time to iron them before stitching the two legs together at the crotch seam. Then I can clip and iron this seam. One thing left on the pants, and that is to sew in the scallops across the hems. Except this time I can go ahead and sew the facings flat in place. Huzzah! I have now reached the point where I can sew the pants to the bodice. I'm lining the pants up with the edge of the facing, matching the centers and side seams, then folding the excess fabric at the front of the pants into two small pleats. I'll stitch all layers together from the inside, blind but carefully, as this seam will show from the outside. And I can now add the zipper. My standard method of inserting an invisible zipper is to sew one side on completely free, then zip it up and line up the other side to match. Then I can unzip it, realign the pins, and stitch the second side. The jumpsuit is nearing complete. I just have to pin on the straps and try it on, so I can properly adjust them. So when I tried it on, I noticed a slight problem, and that is the gapping right about here. Um, I could fix this by putting in a dart, but you know what they say about turning your problems into solutions, and I got a brand new idea for the design of taking large eyelets and just putting them on each scallop. And then the straps, which I made way too long for some reason, actually it's going to be perfect because I can just thread those through the scallops.
So I finished the jumpsuit and it's fine. It's great. There's nothing really wrong with it. It fits well. There were no big flaws. It's just compared with my original drawing, the eyelids do change the look drastically. It's a cool look, but it's not really what I was going for. And there are a few other things I'm not thrilled with. For example, the pockets are not very deep and I forgot to put any kind of closure on them, so they're basically useless for motorcycling. I would like to try and alter the bodice pattern to get the neckline to work out as I originally planned and also to try lining it because my raging levels of perfectionism have gone masochistic. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's fine, it's fine. But here's the thing, I really do want to remake it. To me, it is worth the second attempt because I know that I'll learn a lot more and I have to do it now while everything's still fresh or it's just never going to happen and that'll be one more project for the books that I was almost happy with. I'll spare you the majority of the remake process as it was 90% the same. The pockets were the single biggest difference. I added three inches of depth. And the big challenge was that I wanted to add hidden zippers to the inside without changing the outside appearance at all. To sew the pants into the lining without showing from the outside, I sewed them to a facing strip, then hand tacked the bodice lining down to cover the seams. Now it is nice and clean on the inside. My new pocket pattern was a huge success. It took almost three hours to figure out how they should go together, and to actually stitch them so the zipper was completely hidden, but I think it was well worth it. And they are so deep! I can fit literally the entire contents of my purse inside, including my wallet, phone, iPod, earbuds, keys, pocket knife, notebook, sunglasses, extra pens and pencils, chapstick, and a hair clip. And they still have enough slack to zip up. Another edit I made after wearing this version of the jumpsuit several times was to go back and tack the scallops down at the waist to keep them from lifting. So, final time and cost breakdown. Each jumpsuit took about 16 hours to complete from beginning the pattern to sewing the last stitch. The linen cost $15.57 per jumpsuit, plus $2.99 for the zipper and $6.47 for the eyelets of the first jumpsuit, and $2.49 for the zipper, plus $4.95 for the pocket zippers of the second jumpsuit. Hi, pretty bird. And if you've made it this far, I'd like to thank you for watching. This was definitely more of a rambling, experimental project than a tutorial. Probably a bit odd, but hopefully interesting. And now I'd like to show you the final finished result.